Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy presentation here on um, Bordeaux. This is the first of four presentations on Bordeaux. So this is uh, part of our free content for the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. The first three sessions uh, will be available for everybody and the fourth will be a members only. You can find out more information about signing up to the Wine with Jimmy e-learning portal by visiting the website www.winewithjimmy.com. Lots more information there including written questions and answers, multiple choice questions, revision sessions, flashcards, more videos, lots available to help you prepare yourself for the WSET Level 3 examination. Please have a look and subscribe in your own time. So let's take a look at our first section on Bordeaux. So on this we'll look at Bordeaux, look a bit of geography, um, and then start to talk about the climate and weather of the area. Uh, we'll then focus on the right bank and we're beginning with Pomerol here and then discussing key grape varieties like Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Um, we'll look at a few infographics as well to help us with this and as it says at the bottom uh, included a working written question. So at the end of this presentation we'll go through a few questions uh, in the written format uh, and answer them so you get a feel for what WSET may ask in the examination and so you are well prepared for it. Um, all the social media is found at the bottom of each slide. Wine with Jimmy is my, my two wine schools, West London Wine School, South London Wine School are in the middle and then Streatham Wine House is my bar in London, United Kingdom. Okay, so uh, here is some vineyards in Pomerol. So this is Vieux Chateau sur Tran. Um, and we're gonna have a bit of a video looking at some uh, very famous estates, including this one uh, in, in a little bit. So first of all, let's um, talk about the region of Bordeaux. Uh, so Bordeaux is located in the southwest of France um, in the region of Aquitaine. Uh, which takes its name from water, aqua, uh, because this is a land of water, rivers, rainfall, and oceans. Bordeaux as well gives its name to this, bord and o, meaning the border of water, uh, and that's because this is um, a city which is once again dominated by moisture all year round, uh, so the rivers, the rainfall, and the oceans. Um, it is the largest AOC region in France with around 120,000 hectares of vines. 90% um, of what Bordeaux produces is red, um, dominated mainly by Merlot that we'll talk about today. And then 10% is your white or sweet wine production uh, in the region, um, which actually therefore equates to somewhere around 12,000 hectares. So it's actually not insignificant. Um, it just looks insignificant because it's only 10%, but it is such a large quality wine region. So there is quite a bit produced in this region. Okay, um, so we won't go into too much detail. I mean, I'll give you a little bit of history just because I think it's important with Bordeaux. Um, really just to sort of outline the success of this region is really due to three empire influences. Uh, and that is the um, the rule for 300 years of the British, which f firmly cemented um, Bordeaux into the British mines and across the British Empire. The Dutch were huge uh, innov innovators here and planters of vines, certainly um, draining the marshes of the Medoc uh, and planting vines in Léonon and Pessac. Um, and then, of course, the French. Uh, so it's a, a frontier place, really. It's a uh, a city and a wine region as on the gateway to the new world uh, and uh, with a huge amount of empire influence and that's why Bordeaux today is remarkably important across the world. Um, so that is the Bordeaux region. Um, so here it is a little bit closer. Um, it is a very complicated area with many separate small villages and AOCs. It therefore takes a bit of time to structure your revision to understand Bordeaux. Um, so that's how we're doing it in these four videos. We'll tackle um, Pomerol and Merlot in this one. The next one is Saint-Emilion. Uh, and then the ones after that are the left bank with Cabernet Sauvignon and the white and sweet wines of Bordeaux. Um, so it is really quite important to understand all those key areas uh, with these classic grape varieties. 
The general climate of Bordeaux is what we call a moderate maritime climate. Okay, so uh, a moderate maritime climate. Um, immediately, if we talk about that moderate, of course, because it is tempered by the Atlantic maritime, the same thing, you will find that rainfall is a very co a common factor all year round in this area. Um, this, um, th these problems that we find here, we're going to list. Um, and then we'll talk about how that impacts the wines in this area as well. So moderate maritime. One thing which is a positive is that there is a lot of airflow throughout this area, uh, and that is due to its proximity on the Bay of Biscay and the effect, the effect of the Atlantic. So therefore, the settling spring frosts are, um, are, are very rare. You don't tend to find too much of an issue with frosts, maybe more so as you go into areas like the right bank, um, but still it is not the most common problem in this area. Um, one thing here that is very worth talking about is what we call the Lond Pine Forest. And let's just draw this in so you understand whereabouts this is. So the Lond Pine Forest is all down here, this kind of area. Um, and that Lond Pine Forest is the largest man-made forest in Europe. It's 1.1 million hectares large. It's very, very sizable. And the sheer volume of these trees act as a buffer against the, the sort of salty, cold winds of the Atlantic. So it kind of um, it kind of buffers it and reduces the issues of the Atlantic. Also, around Arcachon, which is the Bay of Arcachon here, great for oysters. Um, what you'll find um, dotted up this area are sand dunes. And we're not talking about little tiny sand dunes that you might find on British coast. These are huge uh, deposited sand dunes. They are the size of quite large hills and they take quite a long time to walk up. I've tried it and done it. Uh, and uh, they have spectacular views. Um, so another factor which really will um, sort of help protect against the, uh, against the Atlantic. Um, but as we mentioned, it is still going to be an area dominated by rainfall all year round. And that brings, of course, lots of humidity. The issues of rainfall all year round are listed here. So it can disrupt flowering, of course. Um, so this means, of course, you are looking at uh, sort of late uh, uh, sort of late spring, early summer, and flowering needs to be in conditions which are quite consistent. If there is inclement weather, and if it is a bit too uh, windy or rainy, then that of course will um, upset the flowering and you won't get even flowering and a reduction of flowering. So this can reduce yields. Uh, and that of course um, can also be for fruit set as well. So if it's heavy rainfall as the fruit is setting and flat, maybe pollination was successful, but then the rain is quite heavy, that can also cause problems with the fruit set. So it won't set properly and that reduces yields again. Um, it can promote mildew and rot, uh, certainly with enough heat uh, and warmth and then that moisture you'll find problems with mildew. It's an area that has tackled mildew and rot all of its life. Uh, and that is why there's quite heavy amounts of spraying done uh, traditionally in this region. And of course, if it rains during sort of September, October time, when grapes are due to be harvested, the vine, remember, is at a very proactive stage of its life um, at the end of the year. Uh, and it will take up water quite easily, and that could dilute the grapes, leading to a bloating of grapes and a dilution of the harvest. It can reduce the quality. Um, so quite a quite a list of things there to sort of talk about and, and to mention. Um, all of this leads to vintage variation. So Bordeaux is not the most consistent of areas, and that is why it is heavily talked about uh, amongst the press and in reviews and by all of us about this vintage being better than this vintage and that one's better than this and so on. And that's vintage variation, which is very, very, um, you know, very, very varied in this region. Um, but changes in canopy management techniques, maximizing sunlight, um, aeration to minimize mildew have resulted in healthier grapes. 
um, spraying um, now classically spraying with copper and sulfur and copper sulfate and lime um, which is your Bordeaux mixture has been very heavy in this area um, it's being rained back today certainly with more organic and biodynamic practices in the region but still it's an area that has had issues with toxicity of the soils due to overuse of things like copper um, but there has been um, certainly a mark of, uh, of movement of quality in the last 20, 30 years, um, higher quality wines being produced and heavier selection. And this is even in terms of uh, uh, creating more wines like second wines. Um, and these second wines are where your less quality grapes go into. And that means you only reserve the best quality grapes for your, your grand vent, your top wine, your main wine of the chateau. Um, so there's a few things about the macroclimate and how uh, it affects the Bordeaux region. So we are going to what's classically known, and I'm sure you know this, as the right bank. Uh, and it's called the right bank as it sits to the right hand side of all of the rivers. So here we have the Dordogne that is running in from the east here, meanders its way past Le Bourne as it goes to meet the Garonne and the confluence creates there the Gironde big shipping estuary. Uh, so this is the Dordogne. So you sometimes might see this written as the Dordogne areas or Dordogne region or as the Libourne. Uh, and that's because of the city here, uh, or the right bank. Now, we are not going to mention saint Emilion and all of its glory or its satellites here in this one because that will be done on the next presentation. This is purely looking at Pomerol. So we're talking about Pomerol and Merlot on this one and a bit of Cabernet Franc. With the saint Emilion one, what I wanted to show you was more around the classification because it's a very important part to understand. So that will be tackled in video two. So there is Pomerol clearly identified to the northeast of Libourne. Um, there is a subdistrict called Le Land de Pomerol, which makes of, uh, often slightly sort less complex wines. But it is Pomerol, the famous village and its region that uh, is making some of the most um, perhaps powerful wines of this area. Now, this is a little bit more continental, less maritime here because we are a bit more inland, but we still do classify this as a maritime climate. So we're going to look at uh, a quick video of the area. And uh, this is basically looking at um, just the right bank, Bordeaux, um, just looking at St. Emilion and then we'll go to Pomerol. So we get an idea of these key places. And I'm going to show you a couple of key chateaux in this area as well. So here we go. Um, hopefully this loads up quite soon. There we are. There is the glorious nation of France. And we head down to the water, the land of water, uh, which is the Bordeaux region. Look at the big shipping estuary of the Gironde which is up uh, up here. And then we have our Dordogne here where it states Pomerol and saint Emilion. So there it is now focusing on saint Emilion, which is also just to the northeast of the Dordogne. And then finally to Pomerol, which is just to the northeast of Le Bourne and the Dordogne River. Um, it's uh, a raised plateau. It is not the hilliest of landscapes, but you'll see very, um, very well-placed vineyards here pretty much crammed into a very small area. This is Chateau Le Pan, which is a very famous Pomerol. Uh, and you'll see it in the picture there um, with its newer visitor center. And then we have Chateau Petrus, which of course is possibly one of the most famous wines of the whole of Bordeaux, uh, very close by. So what kind of style does Pomerol wines make? So I've mentioned already that Le Land de Pomerol, which is your, uh, your, um, your sub-district makes slightly lighter styles. Pomerol, there is variation, but classically Pomerol wines are very full bodied. Um, they are made from a majority of Merlot, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but there tends to be, due to often influence here of certain winemakers and flying winemakers, um, there tends to be quite heavy extraction here and quite ripe fruit. So you'll find the wines tend to be quite dark, deep colored, 
um, a very big, full-bodied alcoholic uh, with some very big structure behind them. Um, so they are some of the most uh, sort of spicier, richer styles and often with black fruit, which is not the most common type of color of fruit for Merlot. Um, so yeah, the Pomerol, and it's not a big area. It's a small area. It's nowhere near as big as saint Emilion. Um, so the key grape variety is Merlot. Okay, so um, Merlot is a grape variety that needs warmth and it requires ripening. So it's better in moderate to hot climates. And here we are in a moderate climate. Um, it's early budding uh, and it's mid ripening. So it can suffer with spring frosts, but they are not the most common here. And it ripens earlier than Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's one of the first black grape varieties to be collected in Bordeaux. Um, so this is important to understand. There are many grape varieties in play in Bordeaux, um, majorly five reds and three whites. Now, they all have different genetics. They all have differing, differ, differing ripening. And this means that uh, really you have quite a lot to fall back on as a Bordeaux producer if you are creating a blend. Because it could be that there are problems with rainfall later on in the year and the Cabernet Sauvignon is, is affected but you have brought in your Merlot in good conditions. So Merlot may be used more in that vintage, for instance, and that is one of the major benefits of blending. Um, it is a vigorous vine, it's fertile, and it needs to be tended to in the vineyards to restrict its very high vigor. Uh, so pruning is common and an intensive pruning with Merlot. Um, if the grapes are not fully ripe, Merlot will often um, exhibit this kind of herbaceous note. You'll find mint is quite common, but maybe a stalkiness as well. It is related to Cabernet, so therefore you will find similarities there. But generally speaking, there are two styles of Merlot produced around the world. Um, and this is very generalizing, but this is what WSET would like you to know. There is the sort of international style of Merlot, which is generally leaving the grapes on the vine longer. Uh, that's to get higher alcohols, um, potentially a bit more tannic structure and deeper colors, and then with heavier extraction. So lots more remontage and pigeage uh, to produce these New World and Pomerol style Merlots, big, powerful wines, um, you know, full, full bodied, 14 to 15 percent alcohol, deep, deep color with dark, brooding black fruits like blackberry. And then really the, the sort of common style for more generic Bordeaux wines is the earlier harvest. And it's not an early harvest, but certainly earlier than what we'd say the international style. So picking it when it's not as ripe, maybe has a hint of that spice and herbaceous notes, um, some color, but not the deepest. Often you'll have some transparency through it and more red fruited characteristics. And this is common for very much generic Bordeaux, Bordeaux Supérieur. Uh, and then things like the Côte de Bordeaux wine, saint Emilion's can be like this as well, certainly at the more generic side of saint Emilion. And what do you expect then from Merlot in terms of aromas and flavours? Um, so really in terms of its acidities and tannins, first of all, um, we, we tend to find that uh, it tends to sort of be medium to high in acidity and tannin. Uh, and it depends really on picking of the grapes. Um, and it can display red and black fruits. We've just mentioned that. In the more international style, expect black berry, black cherry. And then in the more sort of um, Bordeaux style, I suppose, generic Bordeaux style, red plum, maybe strawberry, red cherry characteristics. Oak is common. Um, you'll find that uh, oak tends to be in the Bordeaux region 12 to 18 months for more premium Bordeaux wines, that's things like saint Emilion and Pomerol, but generic Bordeaux will probably have less oak than that. Um, the other thing to mention is that um, uh, the, the characteristics, you may find that there is some pre-fermentation extraction that happens in the winery, and that's to gain more color and flavor, um, but the skins of Merlot are a bit more supple and a bit more accessible than Cabernet Sauvignon. So that's where you um, tend to find actually less extraction being uh, carried out for Merlot. It doesn't tend to need as much as Cabernet to extract all of Cabernet's characteristics, for instance. 
Okay, so that is Merlot. And Merlot does account for about 60% of the black grape production of Bordeaux. So it's a huge, huge producer. The secondary grape of Pomerol and of the right bank as a general is Cabernet Franc. So therefore not Cabernet Sauvignon. So it leads with Merlot and a secondary grape is Cabernet Franc. So it is widely used in the right bank. I mean, it's not extensively used, but you'll find it around the right bank, of course. Um, there are small amounts of it on the left bank, uh, and it'd be used in small percentages, five or 10%. But because Cabernet Sauvignon is so dominant on the left bank, Cabernet Franc tends to take a much minor role uh, as Cabernet gives the characteristics that are needed, Cabernet Sauvignon. It prefers well-drained warm soils like its um, offspring Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, so it, it's quite fond of gravels and limestone rocks, um, but it's, it's much more liked on gravels and, and it loves that warmth behind it. Um, it has less body and tannin than its um, progeny Cabernet Sauvignon. So you tend to find it's more elegant. It adds more fruitiness and floral notes into a blend. Um, but when it's picked underripe, potentially if this is in a poorer vintage in Bordeaux, you can find that the herbaceous and stalky note, maybe tomato stalk, maybe mint, um, or any kind of green leaf characteristic may be quite intense. In Bordeaux, that tends to be quite negative. In the Loire Valley, it tends, tends to be a part of Cabernet Franc's life. It's, it's a real key character, but not so much here. But when ripe, often very bright, vibrant red fruit and floral compounds are what are added to the blend with Cabernet Franc. Okay, great. So that's it for the theory behind this. So we've looked at Pomerol, we've talked about Merlot, and we've talked about Cabernet Franc. Um, so here is a label which uh, is actually the label of the first slide that we saw, which is Vieux Chateau Certain, uh, 2009 Pomerol. State the primary grape variety and the secondary grape variety uh, likely to be found in this wine and state the geology of the soils that it is best found on. So the primary grape variety of course is Merlot and this is the same for all of the ripe bankers uh, for the wines. So this is Fronsac, um, saint Emilion, the Cote uh, wines that are around here as well. Merlot is very fond here of clay and limestone. Because Merlot ripens quite a lot of sugar with quite high alcohols, the slightly cooler soils um, like limestone and also more water retentive soils like clay tend to balance it out a bit too much. It's often a little bit too over the top and too alcoholic with less balance on gravel. So that's why we find it on clay and limestone. The secondary grape variety here is Cabernet Franc. And Cabernet Franc, uh, as we mentioned before, a parent of Cabernet Sauvignon, preferring, therefore it shares the geology like to its offspring, Cabernet Sauvignon. It likes well-drained, dra warm, gravelly, stony soils. Um, so that's why there are certain specific hot spots for it in the right bank. Um, and with Pomerol, for instance, there's quite a bit of this warm, gravelly soil. And right in the north uh, west of saint Emilion, that borders Pomerol, that is the same. So you find quite a bit of Cabernet Franc there around places like Chateau Cheval Blanc, for instance. OK, great. So that's that question done. Often these premium wines, so let's talk about this label here, are complex, powerful, intense with a deep color. How is this style achieved in the vineyard? This is found in one of your early chapters talking about red grape growing and winemaking. The Merlot is often harvested as late as possible from lower yields to generate the maximum possible degree of intense purple color. So that's lots of um, anthocyanin, that's color in the skins concentrated fruit, because that's being left on the vine longer, uh, and soft velvet textured tannin. And that's really, once again, uh, due to it being ripened well enough on the vine. Okay, now the question is going to change. So it's the same sort of structure here, 
premium wines, complex, intense, powerful, deep color. But how can you obtain this style in the winery? And this is for six marks. So here it's really talking about maximizing extraction. So the grapes are crushed and go through a pre-fermentation extraction. You may wish to write here if you want to, and I'll scribble this in, um, cold soak, excuse me, cold soaking or cold maceration. Okay, let's pop that in, maceration. Cold soaking and cold maceration is uh, the more technical way of saying a pre-fermentation extraction. This will extract color and flavor, uh, and there'll be careful, consistent cap management. The, um, the, the, the talk around cap management is really about how uh, you, um, you maximize the most from that cap, but also keep it as moist as possible so it doesn't spoil and uh, end up turning to vinegar and acetic notes. So it's really keeping the cap moist, but then pumping over, punching down, and other processes as well. These will be used to further enhance color, tannin, and flavor. Oak will often be used for fermentation and or maturation, 12 to 18 months. Uh, which is often quite new oak to add more complexity as well. So that will give more intensity and more powerful notes uh, to there. Okay, so hopefully that's quite knowledgeable for you and that's quite, uh, that's quite achievable. So that brings us to a conclusion for this section on Bordeaux, an introduction to Bordeaux, Pomerol and Merlot. I hope you found this useful. It is uh, the first video of four Bordeaux uh, videos with the first three being available on the YouTube channel Wine with Jimmy as free content. And then there is the members only fourth session. We keep these as much of these as possible as free to you to help you in your studies with WSET. Um, but we do require and we do work on, of course, people buying the subscriptions to our wonderful e-learning plat platform, which is remarkably useful. So please take some time, have a look at that and see if it will be very useful for you. In the meantime, if you have any uh, comments, uh, questions or concerns, please get in touch. You can comment in the uh, comment section below this YouTube video, or you can get in touch with at Wine with Jimmy. Um, my two wine schools are at West London Wine School, South London Wine School, and Streatham Wine House is my wonderful, cool little wine bar in Streatham, South London. Next time you're in London, please come and see us for a class, a glass, or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much.